Hi everybody, I'm Ryan, and today we're going to look at Black Red Midrange in Pioneer. Now it's currently the most popular deck in the format, so I figured I'd do a deck tech on it, so that if you've never played the deck before, maybe you understand a little bit more about it, and anything that might not be exactly straightforward. So let's jump right into it. So this is Black Red Midrange. Right on the surface, it is absolutely just your average mid-range deck. It is trying to one-for-one one you with removal spells and hand destruction, and then play overpowered or two-for-one creatures and eventually kill you. So we're going to start with the mana base. Uh, first, we have the fi flip lands, you know, the black-red flitch lands, black-red shock lands, and the black-red slow lands, and if just a one-of of the black-red pain land. Now, because it's only two-color mana base, we can do some other cool stuff. Like, we're playing two Den of the Bugbear as manlands to hive of the eye tyrant as a manland which being menace and having graveyard destruction is just like awesome we're playing the red channel land and we're playing three swamps and an urborg one mountain and castle lockwain we're playing two castle lockwains um, the reason we're not playing the black channel land is we want as many swamps in this deck as possible so that the castle comes in untapped and rarely are you going to use the black channel land anyway, so we'd really rather draw a card than use the Takanuma. As far as these spells go in mana cost order, we're playing the Thought Seizes. Obviously, Thought Seize is an amazing card to, you know, be able to take away cards that, you know, might be good against your hand, take the best card out of your opponent's hand, or if your opponent mulligans, Thought Seize can really put them away before the game even starts. Fatal Push is maybe one of the best removal spells in the format. Being one mana by itself is just awesome. Being instant speed is awesome. And it's actually pretty easy to be able to get Revolt off of it. You know, whether it's playing a Croxa, whether it's sacking a Blood Tithe Harvester, whether it's flipping a Fable of the Mirror Breaker or sacrificing a Treasure off a of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, getting Revolt on Fable Push is not very hard in this deck. So one mana kill most things in the format, we take. Play a four of, of, of Blood Tithe Harvester. Um, this is just a solid card. Two mana, three, two is already fine. Um, it makes a blood token, which lets us filter our draws a little bit. Or it can be used as an early removal spell or even a late removal spell. We get two blood tokens. It kills most things in the format that we care about. Now, unfortunately, you can only activate it as a sorcery, but that's the price we pay here. We play four Dreadbore. Um, destroying any creature or Planeswalker, we don't really care that it's a sorcery. We are just like... Being able to remove something one for one, move on with our lives, is excellent. Now, the big thing with this card is a lot of the cards that mess us up are Planeswalkers, especially in the famously bad matchup, which I actually don't think it's a bad matchup before in Mono Green, which is the deck I primarily play in this format. Uh, Dreadbore is excellent against. Being able to take out a Karn, being able to take out a Kiora, or even a troublesome like Nicobolus or Teferi is excellent, as well as being able to remove any other card in the deck and jam in. Crox has a two of is pretty solid so we can use it as discard father to the blood tokens to find other things um, being able to play a card and have them discard the last card in hand can be devastating to our opponents and being able to escape it and suddenly have a sixes that deals like nine damage whenever it attacks most of the time uh, is a awesome game ender and like really can play for the long game with this deck you know we one for one one for one one for one one for one bring back croxa time to play the game one unfortunate thing about Crux is even though it's a massive 6-6 six, six with other text, uh, it's still only two mana. So things like the Mirror Match, things like Fatal Push can even kill it. Now we're only playing a two of, of Graveyard Trespasser. Graveyard Trespasser is a really solid card. You know, it's main deck graveyard hate. You can flip into some good stuff. The Ward discard a card is really solid. But the other cards in our deck are just better. Now, the only real reason we're playing Graveyard Trespasser is because it's the best card that's left over, in my opinion. Now, you could possibly play 3 Liliana, 3 Graveyard Trespasser, but any other combination I don't think is correct. I don't think it's correct to play this as a 4 of. A lot of decks actually are playing just main deck unlicensed uh, hearse just in this 2 of slot and then frees up some like sideboard slots. Um, but I like the, the main deck Graveyard Trespasser because it's good against even non-graveyard decks and is a threat in and of itself. For Liliana the Veil, vale. Liliana the Veil vale actually really surprised me after it's been released. I didn't think it was going to make its way into the format as drastically as it did, but every time Liliana the Veil is cast against me when I'm playing against Black Red, it is pretty devastating. Black Red is totally okay with playing off the top of their deck, you know, besides exclusively Thoughtseize. And it plays off the top of your deck better than pretty much every deck in the format. And is a removal spell on a stick, and if you let Liliana the Veil vale ult, it basically says you in the game. 
in like the one for one deck. Bone Crusher Giant is just a exactly what this red black deck wants. It is a two for one on a single card. You can remove something and then play a four three with other text. It is awesome if you don't want to remove something. You know you can burn their face and play a four three or just play a four three out of your hand. It, it's exactly what we want here. Then Fable the Mirror Breaker, which is in my opinion the best card in the deck. This card is played in every like non hyper aggro red deck in Pioneer and in Standard. Uh, the card's insane. I even play it in my modern deck in creativity. This, you know, being able to filter out cards, being able to ramp your mana, also be a creature. And then if like Kiki Jiki sticks around, you get to copy things like crazy things like Blood Tithe Harvester, um, where you can just sacrifice the, get a blood token, sacrifice the copy to like kill everything. And it's like a removal spell on a stick. You get to copy things like Graveyard Trespasser, which especially if it's flipped is like a crazy amount of um, damage. Same thing with Bone Crusher Giant. And... Uh, Fable of Mirror Breaker flipping, like I said earlier, can activate Fatal Push with just zero work because the third part of it is exile it, then it returns, which means a permanent left the battlefield. And then a card that surprised us all, I feel like, Shieldred the Apocalypse. On its surface, like it looks solid. It looks like a bomb in limited and like maybe played here and there and standard. But this card is nuts. It is a game ender a lot of the time. It gains you life against aggro. It like can finish the game in the mid range and control matchups. We love Shieldred the Apocalypse. And then let's move on to the sideboard. Dresses obviously are for um, these control matchups. You know, the combo deck like Hidden Strings. And like, it's pretty good against Mono Red, actually, as well, being able to remove as much as possible. And that new five color of Invention deck, very solid against them. Extinction Event is mostly in the deck for the Nykthos ramp. If we cast Extinction Event against them, if they have a like really creature heavy draw, which they have to if they want to have Devotion and beat us, because that's how they beat the red black deck, um, Extinction Event just like makes them totally reset, which they can fight through, but is very difficult for them too. We also like it against the uh, Bant Spirits deck. Because a lot of their really good cards are one or three mana. Kalidus is super solid against every single creature deck. You bring it in a lot. You bring it against Nykthos Ramp, against Rakdos Midrange, you know, the Mirror Match. You bring it against the Humans deck. You bring it in against the Mono Red deck. You bring it against bring it in against the Sacrifice deck. It's super funny against the Sacrifice deck because they don't get to play their game. You know, being able to like see them see players like just sacrifice their cat, it gets exiled, you get a zombie, you're like, haha. It's super funny. Rending Volley can shore up the Mono White Humans matchup, which surprisingly, in my experience, like it favors Mono White Humans just a little bit. It also makes the Bant Spirits matchup a little bit better. The Red White Heroic deck can just like be explosive and we don't have a shot against, and having those extra removal spells is a big deal. Hitasugu consumes all, is uh, great in the Sack deck matchup, is, pre is pretty good against Mono White Humans, you know, as, as a removal spell. But, uh, but every part of this is is solid against a lot of different decks you know destroying one mana destroying things with money and one mana or less being very good against you know the low to the ground aggro decks you know the exile of graveyards being solid and then it flipping into something else that's relevant uh is really exciting it's too bad it doesn't have read ahead though because that would make this card a much better sideboard card because if you want to exile little graveyards you'd kind of just like come on <laughs> so you basically only bring it in against decks that you know the the one mana or less thing is is pretty good, which it is with Jun Sacrifice because and and Red Black Sacrifice because of like Witch's Oven and things. Regular Bankbuster is in grindy matchups when you feel like you need the extra cards. You know the Mirror Match, it's really solid in. If things go well against Hidden Strings, we like Bankbuster because uh, the match is going to go long because we're going to be removing their hand and we're going to be attacking, and it's pretty solid against the Fires of Invention deck. And Unlicensed Hearse is our Graveyard Hate. Anything that uses Graveyard, we bring in Hearse because it's also a giant attacker in the late game. You know, is it Phoenix? It can disrupt against Hidden Strings. Is really solid against Abzan Grease Fang. Obviously, it's a big reason we're playing is Abzan Grease Fang. All in all, this is a super classic mid-range deck. It runs red, it's, it's only red black, so our mana is great. We one for one, play two for one creatures and Planeswalkers, and then eventually win. Now, if you like this video and want to see more videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. Check me out on social medias, especially on Twitch. Links are above me and in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you for more deck techs in the future. Bye-bye.